A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus went to the Mount of Olives, but early in the morning he arrived again in the temple area, and all the people started coming to him, and he sat down and taught them. Then the scribes and Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery and made her stand in the middle. They said to him, teacher, this woman was caught in the very act of committing adultery. Now in the law, Moses commanded us to stone such a woman. So what do you say? They said this to test him so that they could have some charge to bring against him. Jesus bent down and began to write on the ground with his finger. But when they continued asking him, he straightened up and said to them, let the one among you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. Again, he bent down and wrote on the ground. And in response, they went away one by one, beginning with the elders. So he was left alone with the woman before him. Then Jesus straightened up and said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She replied, No one, sir. Then Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go, and from now on, do not sin anymore. The Gospel of the Lord. At the end of the first century, beginning of the second century, there lived a great Jewish rabbi named Akiva ben Yosef. He was born a shepherd, lived most of his life as a shepherd, and then at age 40 decided he wanted to study the Torah, which he did. And he studied very diligently to become one of the greatest scholars in Jewish history. After the destruction of Jerusalem and the destruction of Palestinian Judaism in 70 AD, he was one of the people who helped put Judaism back together, the founder of rabbinic Judaism, the founder of the school of rabbinic um, interpretation of scripture that would become the Mishnah. And there's a story that's told about Rabbi Akiva. One day at a meeting, he was having a rather heated discussion with many of the other rabbis about a point of law that he wanted to change. And he knew he was correct, but the other rabbis would not accept his wisdom. And so he prayed, Lord, if I am right, make a great wind, a great storm come out of the desert, so great that these trees in front of the house blow down to the ground and bow before us that they may see that I am right. And sure enough, no sooner did he finish speaking than a great storm blew out of the desert and the trees before the house bent before him. The rabbis continued to argue with him, would not accept his wisdom. Once again, Akiva prayed, Lord, if I am right, make a great earthquake hit that shakes the house to its very foundations. Again, no sooner had Rabbi Akiva stopped speaking when the house was shaken by a great earthquake down to its very foundations. Once again, the other rabbis would not accept his wisdom, his change in the law. A third time he prayed, Lord, he prayed, if I am right, you must tell them. They will not listen to your signs. You yourself must tell them. And a great cloud formed in the room, and the voice of God billowed forth from the cloud. Listen to Rabbi Akiva. He is correct. The rabbis proceeded to shout down the voice of God and told God to be quiet. Because they said to him, once God had given to them the law, even God could not change it. That was their rules. We love making God obey our rules. We're not real good at obeying God's rules, 
But we sure want God to obey our rules. We set up all sorts of restrictions as to what God can do and what God can't do. And we get very upset when God does not honor those rules. We have a very special story in the gospel to say, the story of the woman caught in adultery. Here we have the rabbis with their rules, the scribes, the Pharisees. They bring this poor woman to Jesus, maybe even naked. I mean, she's been pulled out of the bed where she was committing adultery, dragged to Jesus, made to stand in front of the crowd. They didn't care about this woman. They didn't care about her sin. They didn't care about the law. It's clear from this. All they wanted was something to have against Jesus. They brought her to him to test him, to see what he would say so that they would have some charge against him. It wouldn't even surprise me if this was a setup, that they lured this woman into adultery just so they could drag her there. But Jesus did not fall for their little trap. Jesus just paused for a moment. And very simply and very calmly said to them, let any one of you who does not have a sin, you cast the first stone. And not one of them there did anything except walk away. This gospel story reminds us that we are so much better at seeing the sins of other people than we are about seeing our own sins. It is so much easier to know when everybody else is wrong than to honestly look at ourselves in the mirror and to understand when we are wrong, to understand our own sinfulness. And we hear it every day. We hear it at work. We hear it around the water cooler at work. We hear it around the table at at Starbucks. We hear it around the dinner table at home. We hear it in classrooms at school. We hear it on the radio and on television as pundits tell us why everybody else in the world but them is wrong and point out very easily the sins of everyone else but are unable to see our own sins. But there is great comfort in this story too. That great comfort comes in the fact that God does not play by our rules. God does not look at the things that we say should be forgiven and shouldn't be forgiven. God plays by one rule and one rule alone. That is to forgive. If we deserve it, God says forgive. If we don't deserve it, God says forgive. If we've earned it, which we really can't, God says forgive. If we haven't, God says forgive. If we're sorry, God says forgive. If we're not sorry, God says we forgive. If we want it, God says forgive. If we don't want it, God says forgive. God says forgive. And challenges us to take that forgiveness and to give it away to others. But how can we find God's forgiveness if we can't find our own sin? How can we know we are forgiven if we don't know God's forgiveness, if we don't know our own sin. Even God can't forgive sin that doesn't exist. And if we believe our sin doesn't exist, what is there for God to forgive? God encourages us to see our sinfulness, to see who we really are, but to understand that God loves us anyway, and God forgives us anyway. That's the mystery we are preparing to celebrate in the death and resurrection of Jesus in this holy week that we begin next Sunday. Today we are challenged to see our own sinfulness. We are challenged to come and find God's forgiveness. We are challenged to share that forgiveness with others. And we are comforted in knowing that God's forgiveness is with us. And that forgiveness that comfort, that challenge is given to us in that very last line of this gospel. Because Jesus says not only to the woman, but to each and every one of us, nor do I condemn you. Go now and sin no more.